Hey guys, Mr. B here again, bringing you another uh, wonderful math video in the waning days of summer. Um, this one is uh, just an extra example on the integral zero theorem. Uh, I made another video on the integral zero theorem I posted last night, so if you if you want to check that one out, uh, you might want to do that. All right, so the way we start is we always look first of all we look for the constant. So if you look here, my constant is negative six. So what we want to do is list out the factors of negative 6. So, this, so those are the possible factors of this cubic. So the possible factors. are Plus or minus 1, plus or minus 2, plus or minus 3, and plus or minus 6. So those are the factors of negative 6. So what you want to do now is you want to sub these back into here and sort of check. So again, I'm going to cheat a little bit, and I'm going to try. Um, I'm going to try three because I don't know that that's the solution, right? Uh, so three cubed minus seven times three squared plus fourteen times three minus six. So if we do the math on this, we have 27 minus uh, 3 squared is 9 times 7 is 63. 14 times 3 is 42, I do believe. And then subtract 6. So we do the math on all of that. Of course, we end up with 0. So remember with the integral root theorem, or sorry, integral 0 theorem, uh, we just need one. Now, in some cases, if you sub them all in, you might be able to find them. A trick that I get my students to do is graph this guy on their graphing calculator, and underneath the second function calc on your TI-83, TI-84, um, there's a, a function called evaluate, and you can just sub these in real quick and see which ones are zeros. Really simple. Uh, takes about a minute, and then you can just fill in, you know, once you find one, quick little working just to check and then you're done. So that's my possible factor there. So what I need to do now is I need to divide this cubic by that factor of x minus 3 and that way I'll know whether or not uh, if it is in fact a solution because I'll have a remainder of 0 which of course I know will happen uh, but it'll also give me the quadratic that's left over so that way that we can solve that quadratic and get the other two solutions. So let's do the synthetic division. I'll do it on the next page. So I have 3 up here. Then I just want to double check what I have. 1, negative 7, 14, negative 6. 1, I, re I already forget the second one. Negative 7, 14, negative 6. So we're going to synthetically divide that. If you haven't, you know, if you're not too familiar with synthetic division, I got two videos on it, so you might want to check those out. Bring down my 1. 3 times 1 is 3, negative 7 uh, plus 3 is negative 4, and then I have 3 times um, negative 4 is negative 12, add these two guys, negative 14 plus negative 12 is 2, 6 times uh, 2, or sorry, 3 times 2 is 6, and then you add these two guys up, you get 0. So that's a great way to know whether or not you did the first step right factors of whatever, right? So, all right, so what I'm left with, of course, is x squared minus 4x plus 2. So I had to use quadratic formula on this guy, something that we all love. x is equal to negative b plus or minus square root um, b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. If only I had a dollar for every time I wrote that down, I'd be, I wouldn't have to teach anymore. All right, so um, let's sub this our stuff in. So I have negative one plus or minus negative one. What am I talking about? So negative four. So negative negative four. So positive four. Here we go. That's more like it. Then negative four squared. I'm gonna run out of space here. Minus four and a is one, and then c is two all over 2 times 1. So 4 plus or minus. So that's going to be 16 subtract 8. So 
So 8 divided by 2. And we can reduce that down a little bit. 4 plus or minus 2 root 2, because 8 is 4 times 2. Divided by 2, or 2 plus or minus um, root 2, because these 2's cancel. And that's, you get 2 left from that. So, our solutions, or our roots, whatever you want to call them, our x is equal to um, 3, and then we have x is equal to 2 plus root 2, and x is equal to 2 minus root 2. You don't necessarily have to write it like that, but that's, you know, just to illustrate that we have 3 roots of this cubic. Alright guys, so uh, again, that's another example using the integral zero theorem. Um, hopefully this helps you. Remember what you got to do, you got to do lots of examples because there are many different types. And if you got any questions, feel free to comment. Please subscribe. I'll talk to you guys later.